Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is AI behavior tree decorator? The cone check node. Let's go ahead, cover the cone check node, and jump right into an example of how it works. So the cone check node, like other decorators, can be added onto a composite node or a task node by right clicking, going to add decorator, and choosing the decorator you want. In our case, we're gonna add a cone check. Well, by default, these are the settings that you're going to see. Like other decorators, when you add them to another node automatically, the first time you click on it, it's gonna to try to fill in the appropriate information based on Blackboard values you have available. But by default, it's gonna be none, so you're going to have to make sure that we set these up properly. Now. Let's go over our settings. The first one is going to be our cone half angle. Basically, it's half of the angle of the total cone. So, for example, if you wanted it to be 180 degrees, then your half angle is going to be 90. A 90 degree cone is going to be 45 degrees. And it conveniently shows you the actual cone check angle here down in the decorator itself. We have our normal flow control for if it ab aborts itself or nothing. Of course, set that as needed. Now, the unique conditions for here are the cone origin, cone direction, and observed. Now, technically, it's highly annoying. It does say if it's going to be a location or an actor for some of these, you're going to need vectors. They're the only thing that's going to work. So in our case, what I've done is I have our decorator example service that I'm using here. What I'm doing for a cone check is every time we run our service, I'm storing where the player currently is in the player location key. I am then storing when we start where the AI controller is, his location, as well as his forward vector so we know where he's looking forward. Now I'm not updating these in real time. For our example, we're just showing how the cone, chain work, cone check works. But in a real use case scenario, you would more than likely have these updated whenever you do some aggro checking or something like that to make sure your player and your artificial intelligence enemy have the appropriate line of sight. So I've gone ahead and set up this cone check decorator here. Our origin is where our AI is currently at. Our direction is the forward, dire forward vector of our AI. And the observed is going to be our player's location. The only one of these, like I said, that will update in real time is going to be our player location. So that way you can actually see the cone check working. Now, inverse condition basically is inverse condition. If the player is in our cone check, this is going to be true. If we check this and our player is inside of our cone check, it's going to end up being false because we've inversed it. The use case scenario for this would be we want to see where our player, we want our AI to activate when they see the player. That is our normal condition. We want our AI to activate when it can't see the player. That is the inverse condition. Maybe you have one of these set up where if they see it, they then aggro, or you set up another cone check where if they can't see the player, now they're gonna go ahead and run and hide or do something like that. You're gonna make sure that they're in a safe location. So that's what you would use that for. Let's go ahead and pull out our decorator and try to set it up so we can see it. So here's gonna be our sequence here. You're gonna see when we fire this off, I'm gonna go ahead and play. And by default, because we're inside of our cone, it's running the cone check successfully. If we were to go over here, you're gonna see it fails. I'm running my example service every roughly 0.2 seconds or five times per second. That way for this example, you can actually see it work in action. If I go over to our cone, you're gonna see it works. And if we go outside of our cone, you're gonna see it stop work. Our cone is roughly 180 degrees from that corner to this corner, which is why this is basically the backside. So right now, cone check is failing, they can't see me. Cone check is succeeding and they can see me. So that is all there is to it. The cone check is just a basic, simple way of doing a cone check inside of your behavior tree without running any custom code.
You can, of course, do your own service that does the cone check for yourself. Maybe you just want to see if they're in front of it. You do a forward vector check. But if you want something simple, simple, basic AI, where you're seeing if something is within the visibility of something else, you can use the cone check, and these are the options for it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.